All right, I'm Jaron Lau. This is Efficient Algorithms for Music Engraving, focusing on correctness. Um, main purpose of this is um, currently existing music software. Uh, I've had issues with lag, so I wanted to look into algorithms to see if everything could be done in a big O of N execution time. All right, so here's a little introduction to music engraving. Um, staff made up of five horizontal lines, um, and that's where notes and all their musical symbols are placed. Um, space between the lines, I'll refer to as a staff space. Um, this is the units that are used for aligning things in the engraving software. Um, here's some of the common note durations. Uh, we've got a whole note at the left. Um, and we have a half note, which adds a stem. And it's called a stem. And then we have a quarter note, which fills in the note head. Um, and then the eighth note adds a flag. Sixteenth note has two flags. And so on. Um, and then usually a uh, quarter note gets one beat. And there's four beats in a measure, which are separated by these, which are bar lines. Um, so sometimes uh, you want to actually change what direction you draw the stem in the software. So here's a flow chart that I made, basically based on um, kind of like industry standards on how they want their, or how, how people read music the best with their stem direction. Um, it's kind of complicated, but it's actually a pretty simple algorithm to implement in code. It's just a simple flow chart, which has some if statements. Um, uh, it's probably one of the simpler algorithms for figuring out music stuff, despite having all these, a lot of different paths. Um, but there's also like some more complicated stuff involved with this, like seeking ahead a note, and going backwards a note. Um, yeah. So then another algorithm I looked into was uh, beaming of the notes. So sometimes instead of drawing a flag for like eighth notes, you'll beam them together in groups like this. So these four eighth notes are grouped together in a beamed group is what it's called. And then um, some rules change. So like for 16th notes, you'll notice that there'll be four groups in a measure instead of two if you just have eighth notes. And then when you get down to um, 32nd notes, then we have a, a little break where we only draw the eighth note beam and we have like these subgroups. So, so four 30 second notes and another four 30 second notes. Um, so here's a little bit of the algorithm for um, figuring out how to do the beaming. So the way that that I figured out how to do it does two passes. And here's the first pass. Um, basically, you start out by seeing if it's a rest. Um, if it's then if it's short, because if it's if it's if it is a rest or it's not short, meaning it, it wouldn't have a flag or a beam, then we set this value last note short to false uh, at the bottom here. Um, and then um, so if the last 
if it's short, then we do this um, algorithm here, which says um, if the current duration in 64th notes divided by this constant equals the new duration divided in 64th notes divided by the same constant, um, and basically, um, what, we've, what we're doing is we're figuring out if these two things are equal. Um, so like with our 16th notes, um, we'll have, we'll split the 64, 64th notes um, into these groups. So there's four groups in this measure because there's four beats. So what we do is we divide 64 by four, so we get 16. Um, so we basically say we're dividing them um, based on the, that value. Um, it's kind of like, basically it just checks to see if the note has passed uh, a beat boundary. Um, and then we also repeat the thing uh, in these inner if statements, checking to see for like 16th notes and the inner notes, which are the 30 second notes. Um, just to see if where we do these breaks, like where we do this break here, these breaks right here, and then this inner break right here. Um, and then we set the this uh, beam property, which we then um, add to this list of notes. Uh, on our second pass, we'll actually go through that list of notes. Um, and we actually have to figure out what the minimum note duration is in the measure because depending, so like, say like we have, so basically anything that has a 16th note in it will use this grouping instead of this grouping. So we have to look for what the minimum duration is and then base our beaming patterns on that. Um, so, so we go through, through our list of beamed or flake notes as long as it's not empty and we'll just like keep taking stuff out of it um, and it's a double-ended queue so we can like add stuff back to it um, so here uh, if it's this if the property is none then that's actually where we start the the beam group um, but we don't want a beam if it's just one note. Um, so like all the beams are drawn backwards. So like we don't draw the beam until we get to the second note in the algorithm and then it draws it backwards. So that's what this is about right here. Um, and then we basically add these notes into a structure that will be our beamed group structure, uh, which is what the notes is. And then set the minimum duration to the initial value here. And then as long as there's a beam that should be drawn, well, we draw it. Um, and then here, where it's a continue eighth, um, here we're checking to see if there's more than one beam and then um, if there is uh, we'll basically uh, draw the beam um, or the second beam or all the other beams I guess um, And then here for the continue 16th, uh, 
basically this is where when there's three or more beams that we like handle this break right here this inner break we do this by setting this value to true in our um, list of nodes in the beamed group and then the continue inner doesn't obviously just keep drawing all the beams to um, and then if the if it's a flag then uh, we check to see if it's um, if it's not the first node in the beamed group and then if it's not the first node then we draw a beam otherwise we just draw a flag um, and what we're actually doing here is we're actually drawing the previous beam so like after you get to a, a break and there's just like a flag note then we go, go back and draw the beam from the previous one instead of continuing the beam and then um, and then this one at the end uh, is basically just checking to see if um, there's another beam that needs to get drawn at the end of a measure, basically. Because once you get through this whole list, you'll be at the end of a measure. And then you might need to finish up drawing the last beam um, that would that would have normally been drawn in the next go through the loop. Um, so now on to the algorithms I figured out for dynamic articulation and lyric placement. Um, so they're all, all of them are centered on the note head that they're supposed to apply to. Um, there is an exception to this though, is that um, dynamics will often move to the left to if there's like too much crowded crowdedness in the score. Uh, so there's just a simple algorithm for just moving it to the left. Um, basically if it collides, just change the x position so that it goes or x coordinate so it goes to the left. Um, and then articulations and lyrics are also centered. So for accidental placement can mostly use the same the same kind of algorithm. Um, but there's like a, a cutout box boxes that need to. Like if you use cutouts, you can get a more um, accurate, I guess, bounding box, but not really a box at that point uh, of the image. So here in the first one, this first picture. It's just or first note is using um, two bounding boxes, and the accidentals appear pretty far apart. They're not they're not even close to like colliding with each other. Um, but in the second picture, we're actually using the cutouts to, and he allows the accidentals to be closer together, so that it doesn't look so spread out. But it's also like not too close that like it's hard to read, and Usually you want to cram as much stuff together while it's still like feeling like not cramped when you're laying out music. Um, so now for the rhythmic spacing algorithm. So um, usually you want the longer notes to have more space around them, have, them have like a padding to the usually to the right that'll show that it takes longer than the other notes. Uh, it kind of just, it's just another way to visualize how long each note takes. Um, it just makes it easier for the player to read and like play it if they're playing like on an instrument or sing the right rhythm if they're singing. Um, so then so you'll notice like this eighth note and this eighth rest together take up as much space as this quarter note and this quarter note Two of these quarter notes would take up as much space as this half note. Two of the half notes would take up as much space as this whole note. But as you can see, there's a ton of space after the whole note right here. 
So usually what the music engravers do is they'll have a compressed version of it where the whole note still takes up more space. I mean, this eighth note still takes up the same amount of space as it does in the top picture. But the quarter note just takes up a little bit more space than the eighth note, and the half note takes up a little bit more space than the quarter, and the whole note takes up a little more than the half. Um, but then this kind of thing is more complicated when you want to do the spacing algorithm, which is actually pretty simple. You just do like some linear interpolation. But if you're doing it on a multiple staff score, then you have to like make sure everything lines up because you don't want all the all the notes to start at the same x coordinate for all the staffs. So so here we're gonna in our pseudocode, we'll start at the beginning of a measure. Um, we'll set the remaining duration, and then we'll create a new double-ended queue. So then, and we're using it as a priority queue. So we're um, pushing back um, basically each staff with the full duration of how much longer it needs to, uh, how many more 64th notes it actually needs to uh, draw um, before the measure is complete. And we're going to work to empty the queue right here. So we'll pop the next note to render. Um, we'll get the next note. And then we'll check to see if this time value right here is less than all, which is basically the time value for all of the all of the all of the staffs. Um, so that'll always be the um, it'll be like the the least or basically how much how much is left for all of the staffs combined. So it's like if one staff has done something, then that doesn't like, um, it's not, it doesn't count yet until all the staffs have gotten that far and then we change the all variable. So, so once we change it, once we have to change it, it's always gonna be the next thing uh, in the time of this algorithm, in the time of the measure. So the next time in the measure, how much distance do we need to make, basically applying to all the different staffs. Um, so we'll actually add the space by, the, by creating a, a note duration based on the difference between this drawn note and the previously drawn note. Um, and then We'll set the update this time this time variable before we add it back to the queue, and we'll actually do the rendering of the note, and then um, and then if the time actually equals zero, then we won't insert it back into the priority queue, and that's how we get out of this while loop. So once we've gone through this whole thing, it'll actually be done drawing all the notes. And then but we still need to add the space for the rest of the measure. Um, so that's what the second to the last line does. And then at the very end, we need to render the bar line just to end the measure. Um, so here's kind of like a walkthrough of actually going through this one measure and basically adding all the notes. So once we've added both of these at full duration, we'll start by going through um, and grabbing stuff from our priority queue. So when we pop it, we'll get the staff one. And so this is a whole quarter note. So we'll subtract quarter note off the duration of the measure and then 
and it will just basically add it back into the priority queue. So now the thing that has the most priority is going to be the thing that has the most uh, things left, which will be staff two. So we'll go back and we'll draw, go on staff two. So we'll draw this note right here. And then that'll add, subtract an eighth, eighth note off of it, add it back to the priority queue. And then this one will still have the largest priority because it'll still have uh, seven eighths of the measure left. Well, well uh, staff one will only have three quarters left. So the amount left will still be more. So then we'll draw that one next. And then basically do the spacing that way. And then continue with the uh, next beat. And you'll notice that when we do that, this uh, beamed group of eighth notes actually ends up being wider than the first group because of the 16th notes right here. And that's pretty common for, uh, for uh, a score of music. And then once we get to the end, we'll draw the bar line. And here's just a couple measures of using the algorithm showing that yeah the stuff that happens at the same time actually shows up horizontally at the same time uh, while well, not adding spacing where we don't need it which is right here where we need a lot more space or because we have more glyphs right here that are being drawn than are being drawn right here um, so conclusion all these algorithms that I worked on developing they operate um, in n time for n items and not more, which means that uh, music software that I've had trouble with lagging could be could use these algorithms possibly to be faster, uh, not not lag so much, or uh, what I'm planning on doing is actually creating my own music software using this code. And that's all.